So I'm uh, doing a short series of videos on uh, rendering Buzz Lightyear. And I first want to show you my drawing. And I've got my uh, backlight on right now so you can kind of see my setup. I blew him up about 200% of size because I wanted to go into the helmet and show rendering a transparent object, but also to get into some of this nitty gritty detail, how to separate these shapes from each other, plus the importance of putting a background first in and rendering a transparent shape on black. So having done that, I'm gonna turn my light off here. If I can reach it, yep. And so my first step here, by the way, the tool I use this is my favorite tool. You can see it really matches up to, to a lot of these shapes. Uh, the other tool being, if I need it, I actually didn't need it here, except for my outer square. I usually put a box live area around my illustration. So that's one of the things a uh, straight edge like a triangle is good for. 90% blocking in. And at this point, what I really need to do, I'm gonna take my reference aside. Put it over there, and I'm going to just slide a slip sheet under here just for part one, and then I'm going to put a fresh one under here. Um, Got to tape it so it doesn't fall like that. Hopefully, it won't take too long for me. You can never find where the black tape begins on the roll. Always, always a pain. Uh, okay, so we get that placed. Okay, now what I do. You could actually use your um, curve. I could actually take this curve, for example, and uh, perfectly fine to use this with your markers. Run an edge. It's kind of nice. You get a quick, clean edge. And the way I do this, it's not a perfect match. So I just keep moving this. I get a nice, clean edge. But, you know, I could probably almost as easily and quickly freehand up to the edge. And what I will do is literally um, outline. Now, I, what I'll do is I'll uh, stop the video before I spend all the time filling in because we don't need to use a video time doing that. But I just show you how I get this started. Uh, so I'm careful on this outlining. I, I don't. I can fix an issue if I skipped across like the edge of the helmet. I could do fix that with white pencil and we're going to be using the white pencil on this render more than we have in the past uh, so I'll actually uh, add more tone outside here so you can see that Now, on the inside, I'm actually going to do the same thing, but you notice I have a second line right there. I'm going to go up to that line, and I'm leaving this open arc of white in place. I'm going to try and make it fairly consistently on the same width. Go down to the arm, which obviously the arm is not the background, so I'm going to leave that just the weight of the paper. And then I proceed to outline on the inside of the helmet. So the idea, when I start an illustration, is I not only do I think about the overall tones, light, direction, all values, but I also think what is the best strategy for getting this illustration done as quickly as I can, spending as little time on it as I can. It's not that uh, it's not about being lazy. It's actually about being efficient uh, in our in our business speed is valued and so the faster you can get and still maintain a very high level of quality uh, the better it is for you the more you can get done uh, easier it is to meet deadlines so I got that section filled in what I'll do now is I'm just gonna go through and continue to fill to show you what I would do regarding the helmet and then I'll stop the video and I'll we'll jump forward a little bit so I fill these sections I leave this area here white. That's where the helmet comes together. There's the two piece 
part of it, the outer shell, and, well the back shell you might say, and the uh, front shell that comes down. And I'll go to this point, and I'll probably just leave that open for now. Because if you look, I might actually go in there and put a dark tone in. So I'm, I'm looking at this. So yeah, why don't, we, why don't we just go ahead and do that. I'll just put some dark tone in there. Following my reference. So we're going to face potentially this decision again on the six textures. If you have, say, dark fur, like, say, a panther or an alligator or uh, dark scales, you probably are going to want to go uh, from dark to light depending on the subject, the lighting, other issues like that. Most um, leather involves the reverse process where you put the base tone in first and then you render in lighter tones into that base tone. Uh, with glass on a really dark background like this, I'll call it space glass, um, I always put my background in first because it, it is the major element that you see in the illustration. So that literally is how I'm putting that first part together. So all my drawing is informational. Just a few uh, edge lines, uh, outer edges the shapes heavier line, inner lines tend to be lighter. This curve here is actually this tiny feature here which is just a kind of a dimple in the surface. So a very light line for that actual pieces of his arm have your separation. But you'll notice too, a little bit of a shading here. I can do that. I know that I want to put a core shadow there. I'll show you how I'll render that in without smearing across. Also blocked in his pupils and his eyebrows because they are near 90% black. 